Hello, my name is Ned Harris. I'm a solution engineer here at Kong, and today we're going to be discussing the Kong Ingress Controller. So what is the Kong Ingress Controller? Well, it's basically how we deploy the Kong Gateway in a very native Kubernetes fashion. Um, typically, when you want to get to the outside into Kubernetes, you're going to need an ingress object. And how that ingress object behaves is primarily dictated on the ingress controller that is behind it. So we've built a Kong ingress controller that leverages the Kong gateway under the hood and gives us all the power of Kong, including all the plugins and all the other goodies that I'm going to be showing you. So to get started, we have a basic uh, kind of microblog solution that we're going to be using as this demonstration. And this is going to be kind of a two-part series. So the first part I want to kind of go over is what they call this north to south. I like to look at this as kind of like the building, and this is the doorway to the building that we're going to be kind of addressing. And this is typically what they, we use the ingress controller for. So things like authorization, rate limiting, you know, who can get in, how many people can get in. That's kind of what we're going to be talking about in this session. To do this, you'll see that we have a large number of these um, you know, pods already deployed. So we have our Apollo, which is our GraphQL layer. We have our blog service, which is our microblog service itself. We have a natural language processing service that's going to do sentiment analysis, and we'll show you kind of the mood or the sentiment of the different text that the user puts in. So this is all running. It's all great, but it's all within our Kubernetes cluster. So in order to get in, uh, we're going to need an ingress. And just to kind of drive the point home, if I come over here, I have this mutation. This is some GraphQL that we could send to our endpoint that says, I'm happy and I know it. So we're going to write a little microblog of that. Well, we're going to get a 400 bad request because we don't have any ingress. So let's go fix that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go and deploy an ingress. And the first thing I want you to notice is there's nothing Kong specific about this ingress. Uh, we have a little bit of Let's Encrypt. But other than that, it's a pretty much standard ingress, the kind of thing that you would get out of the normal Kubernetes documentation. So if your team has already bought into the Kubernetes ecosystem, if you're already kind of familiar with Kubernetes, you're not going to have to you know, bend too far to start leveraging all this power of Kong, because we're going to describe it the way you're used to describing it in this environment. So with that said, I'm just going to go apply this particular um, ingress. And you can see I'm just doing a kubectl apply. So I'm very much using the Kubernetes way to do this. So now that we've done that, I can come back here and, you know, first thing I'm going to do is seed, seed the database. That's just a little step. But now we can come back to our blog and we can come here and lo and behold, it's working. We get this happy I know it. And we got a pretty positive sentiment analysis, 0.4. It's on a scale of one to negative one. So that's actually pretty good. The thing I want you to notice, though, if I go to the header, is it is, in fact, going through Kong. So just by having the Kong ingress controller installed, we've made the default behavior of any ingress we create in our Kubernetes environment to go through Kong. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means we get access to a lot of really powerful plugins. Let's just say that, you know, I wanted to lock this down. See, right now, you know, this is public facing. Anyone could get in. So let's just say I wanted to limit my users. Um, you know, I could use things like key authentication. Even better might be to use like OpenID Connect, you know, so I can use it against an identity provider and use bearer tokens and stuff like that to good effect. So no big deal, I can do that. Um, it's just a plugin. And the way we're going to use our plugins is we just describe them in a very Kubernetes type of way. We have a manifest object called a Kong plugin. It has a name, o o OpenID Connect in this case. And we give it some configuration. This is a pretty minimal configuration. It'll do for our demo. We're just using some basic client credentials. You can see our issuer. We're going to go through Okta in this case. But this could be any number of identity providers that is available out on, you know, anyone who basically supports OIDC. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to apply this plugin. You can see I'm just going to apply our OIDC YAML. And what this is doing is it's just basically creating this plugin into our Kubernetes inventory, if you will. So if I do a, a kubectl, uh, you know, get, and that was to say Kong plugins, you'll see like just like any other Kubernetes object, we can reference it, we can look it up, we can see things, we can describe it. So that's great. Now we just need to apply it to something. Now I can apply this to an ingress, I can apply it to a service, I can even apply it to these things called Kong consumers, which are other things we can describe here in Kubernetes. In this case, I'm just going to apply it to our service. And this is our Apollo service that we deployed earlier. 
I've just added this one annotation, which is pluginskonghq.com, and then I just named the plugin. And we can have any number of plugins, just be a comma separated list here, if we will. So with that said, we're just gonna deploy, redeploy our service that we have with this annotation. And that basically should lock down our service. It's pretty much that simple. And if I come here, we, you know, we saw this working before, and now what happens is we get this unauthorized. So we're basically, this is now locked down. We need our OIDC. So I, it's all right, I have a basic, our basic authentication here. So now I can run it and we're back in business. And just to show you and drive this point home of what really happened here under the hood, I, I kind of created an echo service, right? That's gonna basically do a similar thing just to show you that it echoes back the request and we have a bearer token that is here. And if I go and just basically grab this bearer token and I can copy it, I can basically put it into our, um, I don't know, like a, a JWT token decoder here. And you can see that it's something we can introspect. We can forward this on to our services and, and use that. So I hope this was um, helpful. Um, again, we basically showed you more or less how the ingress works and how we can use plugins to good effect. And the next video I'm going to show you is we're going to look at more of this east to west traffic going on. And we're going to be using Kong Mesh to do that. So definitely looking forward and talk to you soon.